Hello and welcome. Today we are in the new tier 8 US battleship, the Kansaw. Hold on, hold on. I know what you're thinking right now. Kansaw? What the hell is he talking about? It's clearly the Kansas. And I thought so too, but uh, a little bit ago I was playing this uh, ship called Tatsuyo, an aircraft carrier, right? And I was doing pretty damn well. And in this match I ended up fighting the ships that I read as are Kansas Betas. However, the comment section helpfully pointed out that no, I was mistaken. It is actually pronounced Arkansas. Right? Easy enough, Arkansas. No problem, that makes some sense. English is weird and all, but uh, it's not that big of a deal, right? So, because now we're dealing with a ship that's just this part of the name, we just leave out the R part and easy enough, right? Therefore, we are in the tier 8 US battleship, the Kansaw. I think the Kansaw is terrible. Okay, terrible might be too strong of a word, but she's definitely on the bad side of ships. I think it makes more sense to compare the Kansas to tier 7 ships, specifically the Colorado, than tier 8 ships, because tier 8 ships, in my opinion, just outclass them in so many ways. Sure, she has the tier 8 advantages, the better co the concealment upgrade and the 32mm bow and stern, However, the rest of the ship just feels much more comparable to the Colorado. And later on, actually, I'll show, after I show her in port, I'll do a comparison between the Kansas, the Colorado, and the North Carolina in the uh, World of Warships fitting tool. And there you'll just see the numbers. Because if you compare the Kansas to the North Carolina directly, you will find that the North Carolina is faster. She has better DPM. She has better accuracy on top of that. She has more AP penetration, she has a stronger heal, which means that you heal more HP, she has better anti-air until you use your defensive fire, and uh, that just makes you wonder, like, what the hell? And we're not talking, like, tiny differences. Oh, she's, I don't know, 0, 0.0 knots faster, or oh, she deals 1,000 more DPM. No, we're talking a DPM difference of 235k versus 212k. We're talking about the whole 10% difference. The difference between the damage output of a Kansas and the North Carolina is greater than the damage output of a Colorado and the Kansas. And you still have to keep in mind that the Kansas is less accurate than both the Colorado and the North Carolina. It really feels like Kansas should be a tier 7 ship and the Minnesota should be a tier 9 ship or tier 8 ship, sorry. Oh my god, I got the set to the Lana Grossa Coffest! Oh wow, it's because the GK was actually turning in, right? Which means that she lifted her side up, and so I could go under the, uh, the turtle back. Oh my god, I can't believe that happened. Wow, that's actually quite incredible. But effectively, if you play this ship, you'll find that um, the 40 second reload doesn't really matter, right? Because you have 12 guns, I mean, it makes up for that. The problem is the accuracy. The guns just feel inaccurate and, well, numerically they seem to be inaccurate. You fire 12 shells, but again you have a 40 second reload and you have the accuracy penalty. Well, Sigma, I guess. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. Also, on top of that, unlike the Minnesota, the Kanso actually has 32mm effectively all over. Bow stern, deck armor, side armor, etc. Everything is 32. Which means that if a Grossokoffest gets in range with secondaries, uh, you need to run. Except you go at 24 knots and she goes at like 30 knots. Which means that you can't run. Therefore, I don't know what you're supposed to do. HE spam is also a bit of an issue. It's not that greatest issue, but it can still be an issue. Oh, and uh, to make everything worse. The Colorado and the North Carolina get the improved heal, the 0.66% HP per second heal, whereas the Kansas gets the 0.5% heal. And if you think that the armor is so great that no, at least it'll protect your citadel, no, you can absolutely still be citadel. I was citadel in a few games ago by uh, North Carolina and the Massachusetts both. Which kind of surprised me, but it was entirely possible, apparently. And that didn't feel too good, because I thought that was the one thing the ship had going for it. Also, whenever you face Musashi, Shikishima, Yamato... Oh my god, you're gonna be in so much trouble, because they overmatch virtually everything on your ship. 
Which means that you take penetrations, penetrations, penetrations. And simply just put, I don't know what the point of the ship is supposed to be at tier 8. Especially since you get into tier 10 battles so damn often. Also, if you're impressed by my range, that's because I have the range upgrade. Because on American battleships, that comes in the third slot, not the sixth one. This mean also, though, means that I don't have the dispersion upgrade. Also, uh, that soy is looking mighty low HP. Maybe we can, uh, you know, remove the hell from this match. I think she's gonna turn away. This is why I launched the scout plane, because my guns didn't elevate high enough normally. So I launched the scout plane to get the last two salvos slightly further away. So effectively, I was hedging my bets on this one, because I didn't know, and we only need one shell hit here, I think. Those missed, but these should go far enough. Come on! Yes, the one shell that was necessary actually hit. Goodbye, Soyuz, and I think this puts us in a rather commanding lead. I mean, the enemy has clearly lost way more ships than we have. And uh, they don't really have a way of coming back. Oh, a hipper and torpedoes. Now, she is very good at maneuvering, though. Her rudder shift is fairly long. But, well, not long for a battleship, but it's still fairly long. But her turning circle is actually really good. But then you compare her to the North Carolina and her turning circle is actually pretty good, too. And uh, Colorado is even better. Hmm, a monarch at close range. This is actually not that bad, because one thing I will grant the Kansas and the other of the new US battleships, the firing angles are actually really good. You can bring all your guns to bear and still be angled against the target. Ooh, Hipper, are you showing me a lot of broadside here? On. Well, one of them found the Citadel. Nice. I guess there are some positives with having poor accuracy, because your shells go all over, so even if you miss your salvo, you can still hit the target. By the way, here's what the horn sounds like. Pretty standard fare, I think. Anyway, that's a monarch at, and showing me a lot of broadside. Look, she's clearly not angled enough and she's at six kilometers. Come on, Citadels. Well, at least I hit 50% of the shells I fired. But uh, they gave me three over penetrations. Okay, I mean, fair enough. You sometimes get unlucky. So let's just get the rear turrets to try the same thing. Because she can still be settled here. This time we hit two of the three shells. We got one penetration and one over penetration. Okay. Oh, is she going to beach? She... Yeah, I think she beached just now. And we hit two shells again, one penetration and one over penetration. Considering that she is, has been fully broadside to me for a while now, and the fact that I haven't deleted her, maybe I won't win this fight. Come on! She's definitely not angled enough. One shell hit this time! Oh my god, what is this? I'm at eight kilometers! I'm at eight kilometers from the ship! How can I only hit one shell? Oh my god! And the best part is that they're not even citadel hits. And it's not like Monarch Citadel is somehow superbly hidden or anything, right? Oh boy. I need to actually start running. My mouse stopped tracking for a moment and I tried to get it back. Well, at least I hit half the shells again. Two penetrations this time, one over pen. Oh my god, we finally got Citadel! I guess it is possible to Citadel the Monarch after all. Well, now we know. It is possible. Maybe we just got unlucky. Or maybe I aimed wrong. You know, who knows, right? Anyway, I do need to run away because that's a Z-46 and I do not wish to be torpedoed. Come on. How do I hit three shells on a destroyer at the same range that... I landed like two shells on half the hits on a battleship. What is this? Oh my god. Okay, a penetration. She has 5k HP. Come on, can we finish it? 
please. Rare turrets will be active. Come on. Okay, she disappeared, so... It's up to Aaron Jesus now whether this works or not. Come on. Excellent! Oh, wow, we actually landed two shells. Damn, that's pretty good. Anyway, now you have the problem that the ship will perpetually have. She's too slow, and it will take ages to get into range. And even if I do get into range to fire, they're so far away I'm unlikely to hit anything, right? Because the shell travel time will be enormous. Now, I do think that if you can play the ship centrally, I recommend it. So effectively, you go like roughly to the center of the map. Well, not like the center center, but on your side of the map, you'll be in the center. And then you will effectively try to provide crossfires to your teammates. I think that's very good, but you can only do that if you spawn in the middle because your ship is so slow that it will take you an eternity to sail from one side of the map to the center. Which effectively means that you're kind of stuck on where you spawned if you effectively want to fight. And because of your inaccuracy, it gets kind of difficult. I mean, maybe the shotgun effect at long range, due to your inaccuracy, might actually help you land some shells. I mean, it did help me against that uh, uh, Admiral Hipper earlier, but on the other hand, it also caused the situations like I had with the, uh, the uh, Monarch, right? Where I just couldn't land significant amounts of shells. But overall, I don't like this ship, because she's slow, and slow means that you can't flank. And it means that if you're playing the anchor and somebody else is flanking for you, you know, they're the ones going around. The problem is if the enemy then focuses you, you can't run away because again, you're slow. So to make a ship like this work, it either needs to have like supreme firepower, supreme tankiness, or supreme stealth. That way people won't come and mess with the ship like this, right? Because they'll lose the fight if they actually come and challenge you one on one. Kansas and the Minnesota, they don't have either of those, or any of those, right? Minnesota is actually pretty good at tanking, but she's not supremely good at tanking. And their firepower is definitely lacking, Kansas can't even do the tanking part properly. So effectively, what will happen is, you will go your, into your central position or whatever position you're at, and if you're winning, everything's fine. If your side starts losing, you can't run away and you will eventually just get sunk. And because of that, I think ships like Kansas just don't fit the game. They don't have the firepower or the tankiness to afford having the slow speed. They need one of these three, in my opinion. Or alternatively, I guess you could be like the Slava, where you are supreme at providing long-range support, or I guess like an aircraft carrier. Right, you need something that's significant that the ship contributes. She can't be just like all the other battleships because she is too slow for that. So, let's take a look at the Minnesota in port. She does look really thick. And it's really cool, I think. I don't know, I just like the look of the ship. I, I, I like how wide she is and she just feels massive. And as a result, you know, you get a little bit of the feel that she should be powerful as well. Sadly, I think that is simply just not the case. Also, don't worry, you do have your eagle camo if you so desire and use your golden eagle here and uh, it's all shiny and stuff does look pretty and i definitely will use this camo if i ever play the ship but i don't know if uh, i like the ship enough to actually really play her so first let's go over the commander skills and upgrades so i use priority target then adrenaline rush then superintendent concealment expert Expert Marksman, Fire Prevention, and Basics of Survivability. I think you don't really need Expert Marksman, but hey, it's two points. I don't think these two are worth it as either, but maybe they are. I, I mean, I'm not quite certain which one to go for. But because I used a captain that had a better Expert Marksman, I figured, hey, why not? Upgrades-wise, I used the Concealment Upgrade, then the Propulsion Mod, because I really like the Propulsion Mod. Then here I use the range upgrade, mostly because the other three don't really make sense. Sure, you could go even faster on turret traverse, but you don't really need it. I mean, with this we already have a 36 second turret traverse. And considering you have a 40 second reload, you can turn your turrets 180 degrees before, actually more than 180 degrees, 
before you get to fire again anyway. So I don't know if you really need more torturers. I think range on the ship just makes more sense, considering how you're likely to be left behind. Then damage control and main arms modification 1. Instead of the scout plane, you can take a fighter if you so wish, but I figured I might as well not because the anti air on the ship is pretty good. I mean, you have defensive fire, and the AA itself is actually pretty good as well, right? We have continuous damage, right? Look at this 335 at 3.5 kilometers. I mean, it's not like superbly amazing, but it's comparable to the North Carolina, I believe. So, then she also has armor. 40% torpedo protection belt, by the way. But let's go over the armor. She has the standard 32mm at the bow and at the stern. However, what sets her apart from the mini soda is that uh, she has a 32mm deck as well. And the side plates, etc., are also 32mm. And the uh, torpedo protection belt only reaches this high, right? I mean,. On a normal ship, this would already be pretty amazing. Yeah, and it reaches really far forward, which is nice. Against torpedoes, that is. However, the Minnesota actually gets something way better. I mean, compare this, right? Look at this. Look at how high. This torpedo protection belt just goes all the way to the top of the deck. Right? And it's 38 millimeters. On top of that... Whoops, no, that's, that's the... On top of that, the deck itself is also 38. This makes her really resistant to HE spam. And what makes it even better is that if you have HE spam that can penetrate this 38, if it hits this part, the torpedo protection belt that's, you know, highlighter right now, it doesn't deal any damage. It doesn't, like, it hits the part of right here, it doesn't deal damage. And that's amazing. Whereas on the uh, Kansas, you know, it... The torp protection belt only reaches this high. Like this part here is still unprotected. And anything that hits there is fair game. And you can use lower caliber HE to deal that damage. All in all though, I wouldn't at all mind if you just swapped out the 32mm bow and stern and put the ship at tier 7. And also took away the concealment upgrade of course. I think that would actually make more sense because she... Feels like she would be better company with the Colorado. But let's go over the Citadel. This is effectively the same armor scheme as the Minnesota in this sense. The Citadel sits slightly below the waterline. And above this you have a casemate armor that, because of how wide it is, you know, you, you see that it will effectively block any shots. A uh, shell basically has to fall from above, right, to be able to sit, hit the Citadel below the waterline. While it's not thick, only 86 millimeters, it will have to go through this casemate armor of 343 millimeters. And then either hit the deck of the Citadel, which I think will just ricochet on almost all cases unless it's extreme range, or we'll have to go through this additional 86 millimeters. That's not to say it's impossible, it's absolutely possible. I mean, I was citadeled by a North Carolina and a Massachusetts in a single game, but it's not very likely to happen. And therefore, I think the Citadel protection on this ship is better than, well, its counterpart, the North Carolina and Alabama and Massachusetts, I guess. But, I mean, those ships aren't exactly vulnerable to Citadels either, right? So, I would say that this isn't nearly as big of an advantage as you might think initially. So, let's compare the Kansas to the two ships that I think make sense to compare her to. The Colorado and the North Carolina. Colorado, because I think actually... She is most similar to the Colorado, but North Carolina because Kansas is actually a tier 8 battleship and NC is the other tier 8 battleship. We're using a nice website called the World of Warships Fitting Tool or VowsFT.com. There will be a link in the description. I use this website a lot when comparing stats between two ships or if I want to find out stuff like what the Sigma value of a certain ship is or similar. And they actually have a very nice tool for the... Uh, uh, artillery, that is the armor penetration values. And I guess let's just add Colorado here to this mix. And as you can see, the Kansas has very similar... So this is basically the armor penetration curve, right? The yellow one is Colorado and the blue one is the Kansas. And this is the scale of range. Uh, this scale here is about the, num the penetration value itself. This, on the other hand, is the uh, flight time. It's for this red and uh, green curve. 
but first let's look at penetration. At 8, 8 kilometers, the penetration value of a Colorado is 597 millimeters, Kansas is 586. The Colorado actually has better penetration than the Kansas at basically every distance beyond 4 kilometers. Below which the penetration value doesn't matter because there are no armor plates that are actually thick enough that this really makes much of a difference against. Okay, maybe there are some, like Yamato turrets or something like that, when they're angled at an extreme angle, or something crazy like that. But when we're talking like citadel heads, it doesn't really matter. So what you do care about is the long range, and the Colorado actually has better penetration than the Kansas, which is crazy. On top of that, you have a flight time difference. The Colorado's flight time is 12 seconds at 19 kilometers, whereas the Kansas is 12.5. So we're talking half a second difference, but we're comparing a tier 8 to a tier 7 battleship. This bottom chart is for the impact angle, so if your shells are slower, you know, like they are, they will come in at a steeper impact angle. Uh, effectively, this means that when you're shooting at extreme ranges, you will, won't ricochet off of the deck armor of the enemy, but you will actually penetrate it and uh, deal damage. So in this sense, I would, I guess, Kansas is slightly better because the impact angle at lots of at long range is better. But even at this 21 kilometer range here, well, almost 21, we are still effectively on the edge of ricocheting. That is, virtually every shell is going to ricochet at this range. Actually, no, at, at this range, exactly every shell will ricochet. If you go slightly higher, there's a small chance that some might not. Anyway, let's now add the North Carolina, which is the tier 8 battleship that you really should compare the Kansas to. And as you can see, this is an even bigger difference, right? At 16 kilometers, the NC has 466 millimeters of penetration, Colorado 440, and the Kansas at 420. This is a good 40, 40 to 50 millimeter difference in penetration value between the NC and the... Uh, Kansas. And this can actually make a big difference. This literally can be the difference whether you get a citadel or you just fail to penetrate. Or get a torpedo protection hit if the enemy ship has a torp belt. And I think this is quite unfortunate because she even loses to the tier 7 battleship, let alone the tier 8 one. And now I guess let's go over the other stats as well, where she doesn't fare so well. So when we we make sure that they have all the right modules. I'm not going to set upgrades or commander skills because they will be the same on all of three ships. Uh, same with the flags. So, let's just look at the uh, other stats. The NC actually has more range, 23 kilometers, than the Kansas, 22.6. Colorado is obviously at 18.83, much lower, but she's also a tier 7 ship. And remember, these are US battleships. You can always slot in the range upgrade here. And here, and as I mentioned, I don't know what else to take on these other than the range upgrade. On the NC, because you're faster, sure, you can go for the other stuff, and because you actually have better secondaries. But for the Kansas, I think you'll take the range upgrade, in which case the range stuff doesn't really matter on any of them. But it is interesting to note that the NC is still better. Now we look at the accuracy values. So there's the dispersion, but this is dependent upon the range the ships have. So let's add the range upgrade to the Colorado. This way her range will be uh, comparable to the other two. I mean, it's still less than the other two, but it's still closer. And as you can tell, the dispersion values would be about roughly equal. So dispersion is effectively how big the uh, ellipse or circle is that your shells will fall into. That is the maximum distance that two shells can be from one another. Sigma, though, determines how tightly they group towards the center, because obviously they are, go they are going to group more towards the center. The higher the Sigma, the better. And as you can see, the Colorado and NC both have 2.0 Sigma, whereas the uh, Kansas has 1.5. This means that the Kansas is actually less accurate than the other two battleships, at the same ranges, that is. So, effectively, you might have 12 guns, but you're less accurate. But now... As you can see, Kansas has a 40 second reload, whereas the other two have 30 second reload. Let's take a look at the damage per minute value. And um, <clears throat> sadly, the Kansas loses here as well, mostly because of the reload. 212k versus the Colorado's 198k, but the NC gets 235k. 
effectively, the NCL DPMs the Kansas by quite a bit. Whereas the actually the difference between the Kansas and the NC is bigger than the difference between the Kansas and the Colorado. And keep in mind, the Kansas also has worse accuracy. So this actually drops her DPM even further. In fact, Colorado might very well have better effective damage output than the Kansas does as a result. And then keep in mind, the Colorado also has better actual penetration that we looked at earlier. And so you start to wonder, like, what the hell? Why is the Kansas tier 8? It just doesn't make sense. And the other values are basically the same. I mean, we can take a look at the HEDPM, but... Oh, actually, it has the same HEDPM as the NC. That's actually quite nice, but... Um, yeah, I don't think that's the one that really matters, does it? You're not HE spamming with an N with a North Carolina. Also, still keep in mind with HE, the uh, Sigma value does matter, which means that the uh, NC still wins out in the damage output there. So, next up, secondaries don't really matter on these US battleships, but the Kansas actually has the worst secondaries. The other two have better, I mean, 8 gun or 16 guns, whereas this is... Oh, actually, no, the Colorado is also 16 guns, but the North Carolina is 20. And tire-wise, though, uh, the NC def or the Kansas definitely wins over the Colorado, like it's not even close. But when it comes to comparing anti-air to the North Carolina, they're actually pretty comparable, right? Near range DPS on the on the NC is better, uh, medium range is also better, and the NC also has more flak. But you do have to keep in mind that the uh, Kansas has a defensive fire consumable. So effectively, the Kansas still wins in the DPS department, right? But that's not a big difference. And if your defensive fire isn't up, you're better off to be in the NC. And obviously you can't make up for the fact that this has 8 flak bubbles, whereas this has 6. So more flak bubbles means you, you're more likely to set up an impenetrable wall for the CV. And now, there's one other thing. Sure, the Kansas does have more HP than the Colorado and the North Carolina, but it's only 1000 more HP. And it's only 8000 more. I mean, actually this is a big difference, right? However, the Kansas has a heal that has a HP per second of plus 0.5%. The Colorado and the North Carolina are both plus 0.66%. Which effectively means that the Colorado's HP pool, total HP pool when heals are added, is higher than the Kansas's HP pool. Because the Colorado will heal more HP per heal than the Kansas does. And obviously the NC is the same, right? And as you can see, there's a speed difference. In this case, actually, the Colorado is slower, but the Colorado is also more maneuverable. A smaller turning circle and a better rudder shift. But North Carolina compared to the Kansas isn't actually that different in terms of maneuverability, except the speed, which will absolutely give an advantage to NC. And then there's the concealment difference. Sure, the Colorado definitely loses out on this. On top of that, the uh, North Carolina and the Kansas both have the concealment upgrade ability, right? So Colorado definitely loses, but this is because Colorado is a tier 7 ship compared to the other two at tier 8. But the NC actually has 800, no, this is like 870 meter better concealment range than the Kansas. And this is actually a big difference. In fact, let's just add the concealment stuff, right? On both of these and then just let's take a look at what it ends up as the kansas is at 13 kilometers whereas the wait something didn't trigger on the nc properly oh the yeah, captain skills whereas the nc is at 12.3 the nc is 700 meters stealthier she is faster she has about the same maneuverability she heals more hp she deals more dpm right 235 and she's more accurate what the hell and she has comparable anti-air and all of that stuff why is kansas not a tier 7 ship she she's much more comparable to the colorado even the colorado has more penetration ability and probably ends up effectively dealing more dpm because she's more accurate so why 
Why is the Kansas tier 8? I don't understand. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.